So Watch Dogs Legion just released a huge new massive update which includes new missions, new online modes, new operatives, and a new DLC. And some people are wondering, is Watch Dogs Legion better now? Well, let's take a look. Watch Dogs Legion was released in October of 2020 where it received mixed to positive reviews. I myself got the game pretty much right when it came out, I just happened to see the trailer and I thought, I think I'd really like this. So I played it, and yes, I did enjoy it the first time, but maybe I didn't entirely love it. I did definitely agree with some assertions that the world could feel a little flavorless at times. It certainly doesn't have the exact personality of something like GTA 5 or even Cyberpunk. However, with this new update, in playing the game a second time through, I actually really came to appreciate the main campaign and the specificity of this kind of game. It is pretty cool that you can recruit any NPC, and from what I understand, there are something like 9 million in this game. They all have unique individual jobs, they all have routines, they all have backstories, and they all have schedules. It's actually pretty impressive that you can go down the street and just look at anybody, and they're different, and they're unique, and they've got something going on, and they've got some kind of strength, and they've got some kind of weakness. By the way, you can get this prestige operative for totally free if you look it up on Ubisoft's website. You can customize your character's appearance and clothing to your heart's content. This is something I never took advantage of the first time, and I gotta say, I actually found quite a lot of fun in doing it the second time. I had something like 30 operatives, and I spent a lot of time deciding which one would wear what mask and what best fit with their personality. Upon playing this game a second time, I also found that there is a lot of unique charm in the world. Sometimes you just have to go out and you have to find it. It's not always in your face like something like, you know, Grand Theft Auto. I also love that your operatives completely do their own thing and have their own lives outside of DedSec missions, and they do stuff that's in accordance with their personality or jobs. Like if you have a drone expert, you may just find him flying and practicing his drone outside of headquarters. Mini games like Kick-Up might continue to be a bit divisive for some people. I feel like a mini game like this is either love it or hate it. I personally kind of ended up falling on the side of love it because it's something really easy and simple like Bop It, and yet it's so, so hard to do. Every time I failed, I felt myself compelled to keep going. I wanted to prove that I could hit 40 buttons correctly in a row. The campaign has also added a couple tiny quality of life updates, like the fact that you can now see all of your operatives on the map, which is really, really nice. And if you see some of your operatives lingering towards hostile areas, that's actually because they're scouting it, and you can click on them to go straight to the mission. This game is relatively bug free, I have run into very 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 few, but however in making this video when I went to switch over to an operative, um, they couldn't leave their daily routine space where they come out of, so they were stuck in this black box. Oh and then also I was uh, running around and there was a car stuck in the floor. I've played many hours of this game, at least 40 or 50, and I've never really experienced any bugs other than these, so keep that in mind. Something that's very exciting and a bit unexpected for the franchise is a new DLC that includes an Assassin's Creed crossover. Now, this I definitely had to play. In Watchdog Legions, you can play as Darcy, a new member of the Brotherhood, and basically you have this mini mission where you have to do some puzzle solving. I won't say more than that because I don't really want to spoil it, but I found it overall fairly entertaining. I did find the parkour mechanics a little tricky, dodgy um, in Watchdog Legions. This is definitely not a jumping game and it's not a parkour game. So one thing that I actually found really helped was changing the mechanic from holding X to continuously run rather than pressing X. Um, I actually found this out through the Reddit because when I kept pressing X, my character just kept falling and I couldn't figure it out. Apparently this was a bit of a problem other people were expecting too. So I will say that while this is not an Assassin's Creed game and your character Darcy will never have those Assassin's Creed mechanics, I do love the way she looks, I love the way she moves. Just like all the other characters in this, I think the action and the combat is fairly smooth. Her takedowns look really pretty and it's cool to play as her. I do find it a little bit disappointing that her voice actor is just another one of the NPC slash possible recruit NPCs. So I had actually heard her voice a bunch before in playing this game. And they even recycled some of the exact same sound ups that they gave to this voice actor for Darcy. 
So while I do find that to be a little bit of a cop out, I still really, really enjoyed it. Unfortunately, you can only play as Darcy after the storyline if you have the season pass. But if you are a season pass holder, it definitely is one of the few things that makes it worth it. Bloodline is Legion's first DLC and is marketed as an expansion story that takes place before the events of the main campaign. In Bloodline, we of course get to play as our favorite hero from the first Watchdog game, Aiden Pierce. This story reunites him with his nephew who is now living in London. Hijinks pursue and he may or may not end up having to help and or save or hurt or uh, otherwise his nephew. And that's a lot of what the campaign is about, but I don't mind because it's a pretty good story. I really like how it builds on the original. I also really like that you're allowed to customize and change Aiden Pierce. You can make him look like the traditional Aiden with the trench coat and everything, or you can make him look like a, a leather daddy, or I mean, you know, anything, not just that, but uh, yeah, anything's possible. Bloodline was surprisingly longer than I thought it would be. It was said online that the whole campaign could be anywhere between maybe four and six hours. I actually found I ended up playing a little bit more than that. It's not because I'm a slow gamer, but I do like to take my time. I did really like to do all of the side missions before I got to the main ending. And I do have to say that the main ending is actually quite large. It's not just one mission, but it's actually several built within each other. And you also get to play as Wrench from Watch Dogs 2. And he actually has a lot of really fun, cool powers. Season Pass holders will also get access to a new prestige operative with some really cool psychic powers. Here I am playing her in both Invasion as well as Extraction, two online PvP modes that are pretty fun, but truthfully where I was really directing my online time was Legion of the Dead. Now I gotta say, this is so much fun. Listen, I am not usually a, a co-op or an online multiplayer person, and it's not because I don't play nice, but it's actually because I get a lot, I get really frustrated when other people don't play nice. But I have played many, many rounds of Legion of the Dead, and you know what? Everyone plays really nicely together. Part of this is because all of you have to survive to get to the end point. And as it turns out, you know, people just tend to have a, a coming togetherness when you're all being chased by zombies. In Legion of the Dead, you and up to three other players have to survive a zombie apocalypse throughout the streets of London. It's really fun. I love how they've taken what was already a very, very good map and made it into something new. Actually having to traverse through all these side streets and places that I never really discovered during the main campaign was pretty cool. And the fog and the rain elements are honestly unparalleled. Doing Legion of the Dead in the midst of really heavy fog is just another layer of challenge that it adds, and I personally love it. I also really love the fact that all four of you do have to survive together because it gives you incentive to help each other out and to stay together. If you haven't played this game, I'm telling you right now, you have to stay together. That's something that I actually really, really enjoy about it. It's just like a real zombie apocalypse. You can't get through it alone. And you can play it with one player, but it's an extra, extra hard challenge. I did it just for fun, and though I did enjoy it, I didn't enjoy it nearly as much as playing it with other people. This game even says that it strongly recommends voice chat for cooperation reasons, and I highly encourage that. I'm not usually a mic chat person, but I've actually really enjoyed working with and playing with other people using the microphone function in this game. So that's it. That's everything I wanted to say about Watch Dogs Legion. I do think that this game didn't quite get a fair shake exactly when it came out. I understand that there is no shortage of discourse about the Watch Dogs series, but I do think that this is a very worthy entry, and I think that with all these updates, the new missions, the DLC, the new online modes, especially Legion of the Dead, the game is more worthy of your time than it ever was before. So, if we're looking at this game, almost coming up on one year after its release, and we're asking ourselves with all of these new little things, is Watch Dogs Legion better now? In my opinion, the answer is yes, I really think that it is. And I think it was good to begin with, but I think that it's even stronger now. I get so excited by the idea of these developers going back and continuing to work on and expand and build their games rather than just leave it where it is. I love the fact that Ubisoft actually seems to be addressing some of the issues that people took with the initial version of Legion, especially the lack of specificity 
in characterization. While I love the idea of getting to play as any NPC, none of them has any one particularly compelling story. So doing the Bloodline DLC, having you play as Aiden again, bringing in Wrench and having you play as Wrench, and then making both of these people available for season pass holders in the main campaign, is awesome. I love the fact that I can now go and do four or four missions or contracts or parcel deliveries as Aiden. I think that's really cool. I think that's really fun. I think it's one of the things that's going to help bring people back into the game. So yes, I do think it's better. I do think it's more worthy of your time. I would definitely recommend checking it out. It looks <laughs> gorgeous on the PS5. I have to say it's one of the prettiest games I have played on PS5. Watching it in 4K in 60 frames per second in HDR is like, this is what real life should look like. For my next video, I'm gonna be talking about Life is Strange True Colors, which comes out in one week. I'm super, super excited. I am a big fan of the Life is Strange franchise. I also felt that the most recent entry didn't perform nearly as well as it should have. So seeing all of the positive changes and all of the things that are coming out with the next game, including all of it being released as one rather than in a five part series over a year has me so, so excited. So we have that to look forward to in the coming weeks. As always, I have been Kyle Riem. This is my YouTube channel. If you haven't yet subscribed, you're certainly not obligated too, but if you don't find my voice annoying, um, I mean, go for it, right? What do you have to lose? <laughs> Until next time, I hope that you all have some fun. I hope that you get some rest. I know I will be, and we'll see you all here with my next video. Bye for now.